Well, I had the great privilege during the um, Tortilla Curtain tour uh, in San Francisco to call in to be called human garbage on the air. And I thank the woman for the compliment, of course. <laughs> so th is, that, is that the worst you've been called? Human garbage? Uh, wow. My enemies are legion. Uh, give me each a bayonet and a rifle. You can invade any country on this earth. Why? I think because, like my role model, Jesus Christ, uh, you do tend to develop a lot of enemies just by being an example in the world of purity and, and, and beauty and wisdom. I don't know why. I don't know. I think there's, a, you know, in our trade, there's a lot of uh, petty jealousies and so on. I have tried to stay away from it. I don't go to meetings. I don't go to writing conferences. I like to speak directly to the audience so that, for instance, here at the book fair, as I've done almost every year since its inception, I don't do sit on panels. I mean, they're interesting for me to see as an audience member, but I don't really want to discuss literature. I want to perform it. I just do a show. I want to turn people on to why we love stories to begin with. Because uh, they're electric, they're beautiful, they take you out of yourself. It's very simple. All novelists in this country, whether they admit it or not, really want to be rock and roll stars. And um, yes, I've had my own band and I've been the front man and I love to turn an audience on. So that I never, you know, I have my PhD. I've been teaching at USC for 36 years. Um, but I don't want to be a man of letters. I just want to make fiction and then present it. And those are the two things that I like to do. I don't work for the movies. I don't write essays. I don't do anything except make fiction. It's a joy to me. I never know what it's going to be. Each story just comes and it's utterly different. An example. An example. Uh, I finished a new novel, it'll be out in the, in the spring of next year, uh, and now I'm writing short stories. And the one that I'll present today on stage, for the second time ever, is called The Five Pound Burrito. How'd this come about? Well, I read an um, obituary in the LA Times uh, six months ago of Manuel Rojas from Boyle Heights. He was 79. And his legacy, his distinction in life, we all were looking for a legacy, was he created the five pound burrito. Now I never met him, although since I've met many people who actually tried to eat the five pound burrito, I just wondered, what is this like? So I made up a character sort of based on an idea of a guy who has a shop and makes the burrito. What does it mean for society to have a five pound burrito? That's where the stories come from. I don't know, it's just, it's just fun. And how often is that the case, that, that, that something, something gets, it's a newspaper story, it's a, it's a story you heard, and how, how, much, how often is it some, some other form of uh, inspiration? A lot of the time. I don't, can't say exactly. Uh, I've just written four new stories, and I'm hoping for one or two more before I start the next novel. So the first was just in The New Yorker in, in March. It's called The Relive Box, and it's about an invention. You know, I'm also an inventor. I have a basement lab. The Relive Box, which is not ready for marketing yet, but we'll have it soon, um, it's, um, it's lasers, lasers go into your eyeballs, no one else can see this except you. Uh, there's this uh, uh, sound wave, which these technologies exist by the way, which only you can hear unless somebody breaks the beam. So you're sitting in a room, it's about gaming. You're sitting in a room and you can go back to any period of your life. Now you can't act in it, but you can go back to it and relive it. So that was the first of the stories. The second is called Theft and Other Issues, not even published yet. And um, a friend up in Santa Barbara where I live uh, told me the story, the sad story of his car being stolen. I never heard the end of it, but I wrote a wonderful, hilarious story about a guy sort of like him who has his car stolen. And then of course, the five pound burrito. And then I wrote a story about the drought. That's the most recent one, because up where I live in Montecito, we have a 30% restriction. Now, I'm a fanatic anyway, so it's like a double penalty on me. So I wanted to examine what is it like? I mean, what does it mean that we have a drought? And of course, I've written about global warming and environment throughout most of my career, so it's just another stage of doing that. Do you ever get this desire like he had to rewrite? Hmm. It's a great question. Yeah, I'm, I'm flattered to be compared with uh, with Howell and James and to be a guy who has an Irv. I mean, that's a wonderful thing. That's what I want to do. And 
you're right, maybe I was able to do this because I'm single-minded. This is my life. I am an artist. That's what I want to do. I, the rest of it, the explanations, the interviews, it's all fun. But it's not making the art. That's what I really want to do. Um, I feel bad keeping you from it right now. <laughs> well, I'm here to do this. I'm having fun. Uh, my hero in this is Updike. I loved Updike. Um, he published the first volume of his Collected. He passed away in between. I presume we'll get the second volume at some point. And he wrote a preface as well, looking over his career. He said, however, that in reviewing his old stories, he couldn't help rewriting them. I would never do that. I don't want to rewrite them. I feel I don't want to seem blasé. I'm not. They exist in their time and their period. They're uh, as good as I could make them at the time. Uh, maybe I could tweak them and make them better. I don't know. Uh, I'm not interested in that. That's the past. I'm interested in what is coming tomorrow. Uh, that's what an artist does. I want to be alive to all the changes in the society and the craziness of our lives. And, you know, the fact that um, as you and I get older, we come closer and closer to the grave and look back on all the dirty secrets of life like we thought there was love, but in fact there's just animal sex. We thought that there was a purpose to life. We should get educated and get our teeth fixed. For who? For the gravekeeper? I mean, you know, so every day I'm bombarded with ideas. I don't want to rewrite old stories. They're perfect. I think they're perfect as I could make them at the time. Now I want to perfect what comes next. I have many, many role models, of course, as all we writers do, and many influences. Robert Coover being, I think, among the first. Garcia Marquez. And I love Garcia Marquez's short stories, too. Uh, the, the magical element. The Washington Irving, you know, the, the classic American stories. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. This stuff just turns me on. As far as Updike is concerned, I adduce him as one of many. Um, I love him because he was various. He had great range, as I hope I do, too so that he could write the Beck books, which are, my, I think, among my favorite Updike things, as well as Pigeon Feathers, you know, as well as the Rabbit books. Uh, and of course, he was also an essayist and a poet, and God knows, he was everything, you know. Um, I love the fact that he had this range, was a devoted artist, and that he was so lyrical. You know, this is the element that sometimes the audience doesn't quite get. What we're doing as poets and fiction writers at the highest level is making an art object from words, and the words have to be exquisite. The metaphors, there's just a beauty to the language that is the beginning of anything that we do. And he was a master. I did, I uh, had the great honor, on the, uh, the German tour was for uh, San Miguel, my last novel. But prior to it, I went to Vienna because they honored me by choosing the Tortilla Curtain as their citywide read, Eine Stadt, Ein Buch. They gave 100,000 copies away for free. And that was a gas, going to a bar, a coffee shop, anywhere, and there's a pile of the tortilla curtain. And you watch people come up to take them, and they take, uh, they take one, and they look, and then they look around, they take three, four, five, and then they get them signed so they can give them away as gifts. It's great, hallelujah. Fantastic. The book tour you, you enjoy because you like to perform, right, or not? I love to be before the press. I love to be on TV, I love all of that, I love radio shows, I love to talk about the work, as most authors don't. Um, the travel is what kills me. The travel is the hardest part, especially European travel from here, it's endless, it's eternal. It's one of those flights where, you know, you've already read three books, you've had two meals, you're only halfway there and you hope the plane crashes, you know. Um, I think the Australians have wanted me for years and I really want to go there, I want to see the creatures and be there. 17 hour flight from here. Um, we've talked about getting one of the old Scud missiles from the Soviet Union. Boom, five minutes. If, they, if they'll do that for me, I'll go. <laughs>